Begin the current daf, Masech Tzivam, as daf Chav Gimel, begin on the top line of the oven, but the Gemara is in the middle of the conversation from the previous daf. We had this machlik, is between the Bish Behuda and the Rabbana, regarding a case of the prohibition of the Arab of one sister. Because technically, one sister is two things. A, a sister is a sister, as a chayisai. And also, at the same time, it's also bas ishus avicha. In a normal marriage, it's also your father's wife's daughter. It's a very complicated way of saying uh, a sister. But they hold that, yeah, it says both in them in the Torah. To say you would be liable on both. Basically, who they actually held that? No, you only be chayif ha So the Gemara said, the words bas ishus avicha, according to the Rabbana, make sense. Because the Torah is telling you, besides being your sister, you're also be liable for the fact that she's the wife, the daughter of your father's wife. But according to Rabbi Yehuda, what's that telling us? So he said you needed to teach you that it's only going to be if this sister is also the daughter of Aisha Zavicha. What do you mean Aisha Zavicha? Someone that your father could have Aisha's with. Meaning, excluding if she's your sister from a maidservant or a non-Jewish woman, which ain't Aisha Zavicha, but your father has no way of marrying her, then that daughter is actually not going to be qualified as your sister and you're not going to be violating the Isra of with that woman being called your sister. Which the Gemara said maybe it's excluding Achis and Anusa, which is a sister from a woman that he did not have married with. So the Gemara, no, no, that you can't say because the Rabbi had proven it says Eves Bas Bincha Bas Bincha That talking about Ba'einzin when the father it's his do- son's daughter or daughter's daughter, which is not from his wife because that we have a different pasuk for, and therefore that was out of wedlock. So you see that is called his sister. Rather, when we're saying Erbas Bas Eishah Sadicha. Leisigale, what that's coming to exclude is a woman that he cannot have issues with, which is that of a Avodis Chav and the Shivcha. And that's why Gemara continues now and says, well, how about maybe you could say it's this, maybe something like that. That's where our daf begins. I'm sure it's close, but because it's in the Cheskel to anything, Dav Achaim, Pirsh HaMaz Junim with today's daf. Some of these things we're discussing today's daf are a theme we've spoken about in the past few daf regarding the child of a Jewish father, and the Shivcha and the Avodis Chav. That's why this sugi came in, because it's the same theme we were mentioning in the previous daf. That the child then is considered as a non-Jewish child, even though the father is, we know, we go matrilineal descent, which we go based on the mother, if she's Jewish, not if the father is Jewish. And therefore, obviously, intermarriage, it makes a big difference who's the one that's intermarried. Achaisa Kukasa is the concept of that if a woman he has Zika with, then the sister is prohibited to go ahead and marry simply because there's a Zika bond, almost like as if it's Achais Ishtar. And so too, we find the simple concept of Achais Chalut Sasai. That if he did chalitza to the woman, the sister is also prohibited rabbinically because it's like as if his, the woman he gave gerushin to, so it's like as if he was married and then divorced her, so the sister would then be forbidden. Chalutza is the Esther for a kind to marry a chalutza and he, which is that it's somewhat similar to gerushin, so therefore rabbinically also the kind would be forbidden to marry a chalutza. So as we mentioned from the previous stuff, as we starting uh, resuming what we said, Rabbi Yehuda had learned that Ebas Bas Eishes Avicha. What's that coming to teach us? If he holds you only Chayav Achais Chanafa Olsa Bas Eishes Avicha, now like Rabban, he says Mishish Le Eishes Lavicha Ba, which includes Chayav Lavin, which are Tafs B'Kedushin. That's where actually our Gemara continues right now. We're actually on the top line of the Amud of Chavkim Lamed Alf. This is where the uh, the transition the Gemara is at right now. Says the Gemara on the top of Chavkim Lamed Alf. If you told me that Bas Eishes Avicha is coming to exclude someone, and you told me that it's excluding. So, maybe it's coming to exclude if, let's say, Rashi gives the case. Let's say his father married a Mamzeris, which is a, a biblical prohibition. That's only a negative prohibition. There's no chorus. But he's not allowed to marry a Mamzeris. And he gives birth to a daughter. Maybe the Pasuk is telling you that this sister is not going to be a Chaysai. Because it's not Bas Eishe Savicha, because his father is forbidden to marry that woman. And as Rashi explains, maybe you're going to say that Kedushin is not going to be typhus in the mother because it's biblically prohibited from the marry her. And maybe that's what we're excluding if you have a sister from a Chiba Lavin that you would not be liable for a Chisa. So my puppet says, no, Chiba Lavin talks to be Kedushin. Kedushin takes effect. It is a biblical marriage by a woman that is uh, biblically forbidden just on the, on, as a negative prohibition. How do we know? This is a passing in the Vara. Pasik says, Kisiyan al Ishti Nashim if a man is gonna have two women, two wives. One is the loved one and one is the hated one, and they're gonna give sons to him. So if the firstborn is from the hated one, so he has the halacha as the Bukhar. But be that as the man, the Gemara wonders and says, wait a second. When you're saying the one that's loved and one is hated, 
You think you have to mention if the husband loves one and hates the other one, that therefore the, the laws of the firstborn is not going to change? Obviously, because this man hates this woman. Hashem doesn't hate this woman. So as if, and actually Tyson asks, maybe actually she's a wicked woman and therefore Hashem does hate her. So Tyson says, no, it sounds like that it's the hatred and the love is from the marriage. And if it's because of the woman, so then it has nothing to do with the marriage. It sounds like as a woman, as a wife, meaning then she's hated or loved. So what, what, what significance does that have to do with Hashem? Hashem doesn't care if this husband loves or hates this woman, at least in that regard of the laws of the firstborn. So El rather, what does it mean? Ahuva means Ahuva bin Nisu Eha. She's beloved in her marriage. And Snuva means Snuva bin Nisu She's hated for the marriage, meaning because she's married in sin. It's a, a hated marriage. Not the, um, it's marriage as the verb of, of getting married. That's hated. And Ba'amra, Haman, what's the Torah telling you? Kisiena. Which the word Siena we find all throughout these Masechtas and say the Nashim, it always means Havaya. Havaya means that this is existence, that there's a relationship, there's a marriage over here. So you see explicitly that even if there's a prohibited marriage, it's going to take effect for that of Chiv It says the Gemara, but the Eima maybe say that this that you're saying, Bas Eisha Savicha, is Prat Lachiva Krisis. I mean, you answered to me, you told me it's not excluding Chiv because Chiv Alavin condition is type, so obviously it's going to be considered your sister. But how do you know to exclude that specifically of, of Shef Chanabaz Kachab? And maybe it's Prat Lachiv Maybe if it's his sister from someone that his father is punishable for Chorus to marry, that we know over there, there's no issues for your father over there, because two conditions are not typhus. How do we know? We learn it from a Chaisisha, from his wife's sister, which is a punishment of Karis, and the Torah says, Lisikach. What does Lisikach mean? So they go actually in Kedushan of Samuel Simon Bey says, In the Chabal Likuchen, meaning Kedushan is not going to be typhus. So therefore, how do you know to say that Bas Isha Savicha is excluding that of a Shevchan of a because your father can't get married to them, therefore that's not your sister. He wrote, so maybe it's regarding Chiba Krisis that if a father marries someone that, let's say, is a Chais Ishtai, then maybe that daughter is not going to be considered as your sister because Kedushan is not papers over there. So maybe that's what we're saying is also not going to be considered your sister. So Marabi says, no, Amakra, the Pas says of a Yikra, Erbas Achaisla, it's the forbidden of relationship of your sister, who is Basa Vicha Basa the daughter of your father or the daughter of your mother. Now, what does that mean? That's born in the house or born outside? Either in Maimonides or a home birth? What does that mean? No, it says the Gemara like this. It means, whether if they told your father, keep her in the house, whether they told him to get rid of her, which is chutz. That's either one, Rahman, the Torah is telling you, the Pasuk after that, she's your sister. So you see that even if it's a prohibited relationship, that you're not even Kedushin, that of Achiba Krisis, even so, that is considered your sister. So the says, wait a second, if that's the case, Eima, then you should say, whether they tell your father to keep her, whether they tell your father to get rid of her, and the Torah is telling you it's still your sister, maybe that's the rabbis, so wait a second, but the same money, you should include even that if the mother is a non-Jewish woman, or a maidservant, they're also good, there's not typhus, and still we say, even though she's my lettuce gods, it should be saying it's your sister, so, so the Gemara says, no, I'm not crap. The Pasuk says, Bas Isha Sabicha. It's got to be the daughter of your father's wife. Misha Isha Isha Sabicha, but it's only someone that your father could have marriage with. That excludes if it's his sister from a maidservant or a non Jewish woman, which you cannot have marriage with. So the Gemara says, Umari Isha. So what do you see fit? In other words, both of them don't have marriage, and, and you're picking and choosing. And, and how weird is this discrimination from that, that you're excluding Shivcha and the Bas but you're including Chiba Krisis? Says the Gemara, Mistab, it's logical, the Chiba Kris is Habalila Rabbis, that if we're going to include that one of them is Moled Deschutz, we're going to include that's going to be considered your sister, we were, we're going to include a woman that's Chiba Kris, let's say a sister in law, she came to have Kedushin La'ama, because she is a woman that in general, Kedushin takes effect. Any other Jewish man can marry her. Whereas, that Rosh and Mitzvah Chavim, where Kedushin La'ama is any man, then we're going to exclude them. So the Gemara says, no, I don't I can tell you, it's for a for kid. No, we should have included a maidservant and a non-Jewish woman. Why? Because the Megaira, if she converts, she could actually get married to him. The sister-in-law, meaning the wife's sister, okay, actually, not, not that case. Let's say her mother, his mother, whatever it is, all those cases of her eyes, there's no way of ameliorating that. It'll always be forbidden to him. 
In contrast, the Shalach Baitzcha, may Hashem include that, could, it, it could even be permitted to him. Says Gemara, Lachim Megaira, you tell me when she's in her birth, Gufa Achrinahi. She's a different body. She's a different woman. It's not the same woman. You can't tell me it's such a Svara that, oh, a Shalach Baitzcha is even better because she can be permitted to him. It's not the same person. And therefore, that's not a Svara to tell me that you would <coughs> seem to include that. Okay. So now the Gemara really essentially is going back to the previous dot. Up until this point, we were clarifying, according to Rabbi Yisbehuda, who doesn't really need Bas Isha Savicha, because he learns out that Achaisa is the only thing you're liable for. So what is Bas Isha Savicha for? So he says, it's coming to tell you, Prat, someone that your father cannot have Isha, and that's not going to be considered as your sister. Now, but says the Gemara Rabbana that they needed Bas Isha Savicha to actually tell you that you're liable for both. If you recall from the previous dot, the Rabbana held that it says both in the same passage, the title Yechayim for both. Yechayim for Achaisa, and if you did it by Shayyik, you can have two Karbanas. And Basi Shadikha. So according to them, Lamuti Shemcha Vaidis Kechavim Manala, where do they know to exclude the Shemcha Vaidis Kechavim from? They can't learn it out from Basi Shadikha because they really use that to actually say that you're liable on Basi Shadikha. So how do they know that it's not going to be considered your sister, that you wouldn't be liable for the Erba of Achaisa? Says Gemara Nafkalu, they learned that from the Pasik in Shemais. The Pasik says, Ma'isha bi ladeha, ti ladina. It talks about there in the Parsha and Sefer Mishpat, and in, in, in Parsha Mishpat, when uh, the Ebed Ibri, the, the, the master is allowed to give him a Shivcha Kenanis. So it says, the woman and her children, they belong to the master. What do you see? You see, obviously, that the children from the Shivcha is not his child, it's her child. And therefore, she's not a Jewish child, and therefore, that daughter is not going to be forbidden to his son that he left back in, uh, in Tveria when he went to go ahead and, and be this Ebed Ibri for, for these five years. It's not, it's not going to be his sister. There's no er, erva of Achaisai. Now, says Gemara Vavis, what's he going to tell you? He already has Bas Isha Zavicha. He says, no, you need both. You need Isha Zavicha and you need Bas Isha Zavicha. Why? Because Chad B'Shivcha, one of them is talking about B'Shivcha, which is the passage of Bas Isha Vilodeh Atila Denel. Chabah, but it's one talking about a non-Jewish woman. That's the one we learn out from Bas Eisha Zavicha. That uh, it, it's not your father's wife because you cannot marry this, um, this non-Jewish woman. And in truth, you need both. Why do you need both? Aren't they, they the same thing essentially? They're both women that are not Jewish and, and Kedush not Taifas? No. The Eshman the Shivcha, we said the case of a Shivcha, Mishum De uh, A maidservant, any slaves are considered that they don't have lineage. As it says in Bereshis when Avram told that uh, with Eliezer to stay back, he says, stay here in Machamor with the donkey, which the Gemara Darshan is Am Hadoim El a people, because he came from Canaan, that are similar to a donkey, which they don't have any lineage. And whereas uh, a non Jewish uh, woman actually has Yichus, as we find Sukkim Rashi brings from Lochem Aleph and Lochem Beis, <coughs> Baladan ben Baladan, Hadriman ben Tavriman, you see that they consider the son of where they do have Chayas, they do have Yichus. So therefore, this is, but if you're regarding a non-Jewish woman that has Yichaz Emelai, I would say that no, that actually um, we would not exclude it. It's only by a shivcha that we're excluding because it has no Yichaz. And therefore, that's why it's not considered as a, as a Jewish child. And had we only excluded the case of a non-Jewish woman, I would say because she doesn't have any mitzvahs at all. I'm a shivcha the shaykh of mitzvahs because any mitzvah that a woman's obligated, uh, evidence is chayv, including a shivcha, as the Gemara learns down in Chagig of Dal from Lo Lo from Aisha, say, Malay, I would say, maybe we don't exclude her from Achaischa, and it is going to be considered as your sister on some level. So, but three that we needed to have, which I actually discussed, really one would be enough, whatever you only say one. But either way, you would need to have both psukim of Aisha Baladea Tila the Nahaf to exclude the shivcha, and for this kacham of Erez Bazesha Zabicha to exclude that of the non Jewish woman. Now, Rabbanan, so the Gemara says, okay, if that's the case, Ashkan Shivcha. So they only have a Pasik for a Shivcha. But Abed Zikhab Manalu, where do they know Abed Zikhab from? Because, as we mentioned, the source of Abed Zikhab Yehuda, of Basesh Zabicha, that's not extra according to the Rabbana. They need that to tell you that you're going to be Chayim on Basesh Zabicha. Abed Zikhab Yehuda holds you're going to be in a Chayim for that. So they asked, uh, what is he needed for? He's coming to exclude Prat, La Isha Shein La Avira, the Isha's Ba. But according to Abed Zikhab Yehuda, according to Rabbana, where do they know to exclude Abed Zikhab? And Mechita, we begin to say, Neil what do you mean he learns that a non Jewish woman from the maid servant? It's not true. Hanum Mitzach Tzrichi. We just went through and we just showed you how you need to have both because if you said one, you wouldn't know the other one. So, he says that the Psukim are, and we mentioned this in the previous stuff, it says, Your daughter you should not give to the son of the idol worshiper, and his daughter you should not take for your son. 
And it says after that, Amakra the Pus says in the Dvarim, Ki Yasser has been Chami Acharai because he's going to go ahead and take away your son from after me. Now Rashi here, as he says over there, it says, it doesn't say Ki Sasser, that she's going to take away your child. Obviously what the Pasuk is saying, that your daughter you should not give to his son. Why? To the son of the idol worshiper. Because that son, her husband, is the, the, the husband of your daughter, is going to remove your son, meaning your grandson, that's going to be born to your daughter from after me, says Hashem. Because he's a Jewish child, and he's not going to follow in the Jewish way. But on Bitoy Lesikach Lebedcha, his daughter you shouldn't take for your son. That's not going. Because or else it shouldn't say, Ki Sasser. She. Sasser is in the feminine, not Yasser with the Yud, but with a Tuf, with a Saf. That Ki Sasser, when the daughter of the idol worshiper is going to remove your son from after me, it doesn't say that. Ooh, so what do you see from there? That Ben Cha, your son, from the non Jewish um, from the non Jewish man, which is born to him, Mi Yisraelis, from your Jewish daughter, that's called Ben Cha, that's called your, that's called your son. And if we're concerned, he, the Jew, non Jewish father, and this is in this assimilated uh, intermarried couple, he's going to remove your son from after me. But the Ain Ben but your son that's from your Jewish son that married the non Jewish woman, that's not called your son, it's called her son. And then Hashem is not saying she's gonna remove your son from after me, because it's not your son anymore. It's her son. He's considered as a non Jewish uh, son, and therefore that would not be if let's say gave birth to a daughter, that would not be a chayska. So that's the source according to the Abanan from Kiyasser, which only Ben Chum Yisrael is called Ben Chum, but Ben Chum Abba is called Ben Chum El Bana. So that's the source where you see that if the mother is not Jewish, that just like it's not uh, your son, it's also not your daughter, and therefore it's not going to be this man's sister, because it takes a daughter to be a sister. And if it's not his daughter, then it's not your sister. And therefore that's the source according to the Abanan, to exclude that if the mother is uh, not Jewish. Uh, Amr Ravina, and Tesla on a previous episode discusses, he seems to be repeating what Rabbi Yechon said, but Shema know what we infer from this, from the fact that it says, Yasser Bincha, and we explain that it's talking about a son that's born to your daughter from a non Jewish man, that obviously, Ben Bitcha, Kar Bincha, that obviously your daughter's son with a non Jewish father is called your son. So says the Gemara Levik Sabi Ravina, says, let's say Ravina holds. So if a non-Jewish man or a slave has an intimate relationship with a Jewish woman, Havlad Kasher, that the child is going to be Kasher, but that it's actually Machlik is later on, Machlik is on the al. Says the Gemara, no, it's not a Raya. Because Nehida Mamzul Ahava, you're right, that, and there's different your size, but the one that we have, that although that it's, it's not a Mamzul because it's called um, Bin Cha, it is your son, but kosher, it's still not going to be considered as a kosher a child, but Yisrael Psul Mikri, which is discussed exactly what does that mean, but on some level for kahuna, some think that this child is considered a puzzle. If the father is not Jewish, or the father is a slave, the child is not going to be considered as a mamzer, uh, which that's why some, places being some of the are actually the opposite, you actually have more problems if it's a mamzer, if it's a Jewish parent, not a non-Jewish, but be that as it may, it's not becoming a mamzer, it is a Jewish child, but it would still be considered as a strong puzzle because of the fact that the father, it's not a raya, it could still be Rabin would hold that if the father is not Jewish, that would make it a problem as a strong puzzle. Which the Gemara asks and says, wait a second, hi, this pasik that you're telling me from that you bring a raya for the Rabbanon, that if the mother is not Jewish, that then the child's not Jewish, so it's not that man's sister, but that's Beshiva Umisksiv. That Pasuk is by the seven nations of Canaan. How do you know by other non-Jewish mothers that the child's going to be just like her and that it's not going to be a Jewish child and it won't be your sister? <clears throat> says the Gemara, oh, because it says in the Pasuk, Ki Yasser, because the father uh, is not Jewish, he's going to remove your Jewish child that's born from your daughter. The rabbis call him a sim. That comes to include all those because they're telling you the reason. Because he's going to remove your child. That means any non-Jewish father is going to want to put a tree in his house instead of some type of candelabra is going to be removing your child from the Jewish tradition. So therefore, you see, it's not dependent on being from the seven nations. Which tells you, it goes through many different cases, why sometimes we do say specifically Shiva, the Shiva, and sometimes we say no, it's called old. But it says, Reb Shimon, that makes sense according to Reb Shimon. The Darish time, the Kra, in general, he expounds, he gives the rationale for, for mitzvahs. 
which is it's brought, let's say, in Parakam Makabla above Matsida of Kuptis above Medala. He says that a widow that's poor, you're not allowed to take collateral from her. But if she's wealthy, you're allowed to take collateral from her. You're allowed to take a mashkin because you won't have to give it back to her. And if you won't have to give it back to her because she's wealthy, you want to give her back her pillow every night because she needs it, because she owes you a loan. Um, because if she's poor, you're going to have to give it back every night because she needs it. You're supposed to have to give it back to Mashka. Problem is, you're going to be coming every night. <clears throat> it's gonna, not going to look nice that a widow, you're coming every night uh, at 11 o'clock at night and people are wondering what's going on here. But a wealthy widow, you're not going to give her a bad name because you're not giving back to Mashka. Now, obviously, that means to say he's expounding the rationale of the Pesukim. When the Torah tells you, don't take a collateral from the, a garment of a widow, it doesn't say why. He's telling you the reason is because you're going to give her a bad name. And therefore, a wealthy woman doesn't apply. So he, in general, he expounds the time of the crop. Now, so therefore, here also, it makes sense according specifically to Rabbi Shimon. Why? Because if the Pasuk didn't give him the reason of Kiyasr, let's say he just said, don't have an intermarriage. Let's say he just, just would have said that. I would have known, according to Rabbi Shimon, that the reason why intermarriage is forbidden is because the child is going to get astray from the non-Jewish parent. So you don't have to tell me the reason. I know why that your daughter, who makes a Jewish child, should not marry a non-Jewish man. Why not? Why shouldn't he marry a non-Jewish man? The child's going to be Jewish anyway. <laughs> he's going to be Jewish, maybe in DNA. But uh, I don't know how Jewish he's actually going to be because he's going to be led astray. Now, if that's the case, when the Torah does give the reason of Kiyosr, that's extra. I know, says Rav Shem, I darshan everything in the Torah. Don't tell me the reasons, I'll tell you. Right? Obviously, if it's saying Kiyosr, it's coming to include something else. Ooh, which is even what's called Kolam Because it's extra. So you, obviously, when you're saying the word Kiyosr, you're coming to include even that which is Sharm Asir. Bel Rabbanam and Allah, but according to Rabbanam, from where do you know to include Sharm Asir? In other words, you need the Pasuk to tell me the reasoning. That it's specifically, actually, by the, by the seven nations. And to exclude the other nations who are not so connected to idolatry, as the Gemara says, that the, the idol worshippers in the they're not real idol worshippers. They're what's called many of us in just like we have many of us in the Daini, and we just do the same thing in the Zelba Kegel, whatever this and that. They also do the same thing, the same, they don't, don't even know what they're doing over there with trees and lights or whatever. It's, everyone lost sight of the main idolatry already. They're just doing many of us in the day. So, according to Abanan, there's no extra words, Kiyasr, to include Sha'umas. To the contrary, anything Kiyos is excluding Sha'um is because it's telling you specifically the seven nations who are their hardcore idol worshippers. Those are the ones that the woman cannot marry as a husband. So according to the Rabbanan, how do you know to include Sha'um Which Rashi says we find similar discussions, let's say in Sanhedrin of Chafalov. When the Torah tells Nashim that the king should not have more, too many wives, and it says so that his heart should not be led astray by having so many wives. According to Rabbi Shimon, so Layasr is extra. Because even without the Pasuk telling me the reason, I would have known why. Too many wives probably is like probably a, a, a simile that ends with something. Too many wives, uh, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen, I don't know, too many wives does something. He would know that already, the reason of that. Now, so therefore it's extra to include something else. According to Rabbana, that they don't dash in time of the crop. So actually he's telling me the reason and it's giving you a, 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 a specific. So therefore the Gemara says, according to Rabbana, we do you know this halacha to include even any non-Jewish um, parent not just from the seven nations. So the Gemara, you're right. Man time the Pali led Rabbi Yisrael who is the one that disagreed with Rabbi Yisrael on the previous time? Who is the Rabbana that we're discussing? We're trying to find a source for them that every non-Jewish mother is going to have the halacha that it's going to be after her, not just that of the seven nations. That's actually Rabbi Shimon, and Rabbi Shimon does darshan from the kiyaser as extra. The Rabbis call him a sim because he said according to Rabbi Shimon, he doesn't have to say kiyaser because I already know the reasoning of the pasuk. But it's saying it's coming to include even other masirim. Even other parents from other nations, not only that of the seven Ummas. Now we continue in Talmud Beis, which starts a new discussion. Again, continue on the theme of Gibum, obviously, but going on to uh, more complex cases of the, uh, the ramifications about what do you do in certain situations when the women are falling for Gibum. So first, the, the Mishnah lays out the, 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 the base of this discussion. Misha Kiddush Achas Mishtechle. So somebody, got engaged to one of two sisters. Rainy Duesman Kiddush doesn't know which one he got engaged to, which we'll talk about in the Gemara. You know, simply you would think, okay, it's uh, twins, you know? And he's like, oh, you're, you're from the, the, the Schwartz twins. And he gives a ring and he says, I read my and he's like, wait, he's like, which, 
there's two of you, right? Which one? He doesn't know which one he was engaged to. So, Allah is obviously forbidden to both, because each one of them, you could say, it might be a chay sister. It might be his wife's sister. So the Allah is, listen, get lazuba, get lazuba. He's got to give, he can't, can't stay married to any one of them, obviously, because he can't be married to both, and each one might be a chay sister. So he has to give, give a get to either one of these women. That's part one. Now, the Mishnah continues. What happens if Mace? So this guy, who is engaged to the Schwartz twins, he dies, and he has one brother. And again, he didn't give a get yet. So he's married to one of them, he just doesn't know which one. So So his brother does chalitza to both of them. Why? Because he doesn't know which one is the Yavama. This guy just did Kedushin, and he got into a car, and there was a crazy driver, these, these teens, you know, and psh, accident, and he dies. And I was like, okay, now the brother's got to do some, he has one brother, the brother's like, okay, we're going to do chalitza. What was going to be possible to, to say this is me or... It could be, it could be. It could be, but it sounds like in this case that it's not. Both say, right. Both say. right, we'll, we'll talk about different cases, how you could do it with a shlia, whatever, this and that, right? But, um, so he has to do chalitza to both of them, this brother. Why do you have to do chalitza to both of them? So he said, because he doesn't know which one is the Yavam. But as Rashi addressed the question, why can't you say that he does chalitza to one and does even to the other one? No, because that's what's called a chalitza chalut sasai. That's called the sister of the woman he did chalitza to, which that we'll see on Dach Mem Aleph, is also rabbinically forbidden as long as the chalutz is alive. Because on some level, a chalutz chalutz sasai, we never mentioned this yet, we always mention a chalutz zikukas, but in a way, a chalutz chalutz sasai is like you divorced her. So, must, like, like if you're married, you had a way that you divorced. Okay, so rabbinically, as long as the, that chalutz is alive, you're forbidden the sister too. So you can't do chalutz to one and then do even to the other one. And also, you can't do even first because maybe it's not the Yavama. And it's the Achay Zukukasai, it's the sister of Zukukah, which is also like your wife, so you're stuck. You gotta do Chalitza to both of them. Can't do Yibim to both, obviously not. Can't do Chalitza to one and Yibim to one, and you can't do Yibim to one and Chalitza to the other one. So it says the Mishnah, okay, but let's say, Hoyulosh nine. Let's say you have two brothers. I feel like, you know, those games, you pass one level, they say, okay, you got that case, let's go to the next one, yeah? Okay, let's get more coming. He has two brothers. Oh, so here, so one brother first has to chalitza to one of them. The echad, and then the second brother, if he wants to do yibum to the second one, then miyabu. Then he, the second brother could do yibum. Why? Because that's how. If it is the yavama, so that's okay. He got the right woman. If it's the sister of the woman that his brother was engaged to, so it's not a problem with because. He didn't do the chalitza. It's not a chalitza chalitza say. His brother did the chalitza. And there's no more a chalitza Because his brother already neutralized, if it was the, the Rachel, Shimon already neutralized that zika. Oh, great. Levi could go ahead and do yibum. Again, it might not be yibum, it might be marriage, whatever you would go and call it, but he could go ahead and marry this Leia. Now, what happens if, let's say, Let's say they didn't go to Besdin, they didn't consult anyone. And they both, Shimon Levi says, hey, bro, look, you know, there's these two women, we don't know which one. You take one, I'll take the other one. So then, you don't remove those women from their marriage. Why? Because technically, each one of them could say, I, I got the right one. And even if it's not, even if it's the opposite, if let's say the first one to do Yibum, that maybe he didn't get the right one. It wasn't the Yavam. Let's say it was a Chesek Ukasa, which that moment was definitely was forbidden for him to do that, because it was a Chesek Ukasa. But ultimately, at the end of the day, when his brother goes and does him to the other one, which is the right Yavam, let's say, he removes the, the, the Zika from the other one retroactively. <laughs> so at the end of the day, he's in a good place. Maybe in the moment he shouldn't have done that. But Kamu Bukansu, we're in with we're not going to take him away, because there's no problem as it is right now of being married to this woman, the mother of Shabbat. <coughs> now the Mishnah continues with another case. Shnai, two unrelated men. This Ruben and Gershon, they're not related at all. Shekit Shushti where they got engaged to two sisters. Again, no shayk, this is a family that two regular Bacharim are, are engaged to. This Rachel and Leah, they, they got engaged to two sisters. The problem is, again, there's the Schwartz twins. Zeni de Ezekiddish, Vizani day is a kiddish. 
They don't, neither one of them knows these two roommates, they're not brothers, these two roommates, and a night on the town, they find the Schwartz twins at the Chasna, they say the Shatran, she's very fast, she goes speed dating, let's go there, chak chak, and then they give the ring, and they say, who did you meet, who? I don't know. And neither one of them knows who they're engaged to. You only get this in, in your vomits, you, know? you don't get this in real life, don't worry, right? So, so what do you do now? Now, neither one actually could go marry because it might be a chay sishtay. So, it was a busy night they had over here. The Rabbanim came in, they had to make a ready, write up gittin already. And each one has to give two gittin to either one of these women because you don't know which one. Now, the case obviously gets a little bit more complicated. Now, Mesu, let's say these two, bro- these two guys, this Ruben and Gershon, they both and they get at this crazy night and they get in the car and there's, there's an accident. Now, they both die. Right? Lezeach or Lezeach. Now, each one of them had a brother. Reuben had this brother Shimon, and this Gershon had a brother Kaz. So, the Allah is Zecha el Sashtain. Zecha el Sashtain. Each one of those brothers have to chalitz to both of them, because each one of them is going to be forbidden to do Yibum, because he might be hitting a Chayse Kukasai. If, if, if Shimon decides Rachel, it might be, Leah might be the Zakuka, and, and he might be marrying a Chayse Kukasai. So, he can't do that. So, each one of them has to do chalitz to both of them. Now, a little bit more complicated the case gets. So, um, let's say that echad or Lezeshnai. Let's say um, Gershon had one brother, Kaz. But Reuben actually had two brothers. He had this Levi, uh, the Shimon, and this Levi. So here the halach is going to be a little bit different. Hayachid chaylis l'shtem. So the one who has, when we call him the Yachid, he's the one who has one brother. He does chalitza to both Rachel and Leah. Like we explained before, because he obviously cannot do Yibam, not before chalitza, because if it's before chalitza, he might be getting a chalitza And not after chalitza, because it's a chalitza So therefore, he cannot do Yibam. He, and this is very important for the case, he's got to be the one, Chas, got to be the one doing chalitza first to both Rachel and to Leah. And the reason why that's very important is because, as you're going to see in the case, one of these two brothers is going to be able to do Yibam, but that's only if Kohas first did Chalitza the both, because if he doesn't do Chalitza the both, regarding Levi and Shimon, they might be getting the Issa Yivam the Shuk. Because one of these women was engaged to Gershon. If Kohas doesn't do Chalitza first to both, none of them could do Yibam to any one of these women. Because one of these women might be a Yivama to Kohas. And if any one of these brothers take one of these women, they might be violating the Isidariyaisa of Yavama the Shuk, of Yavama marrying Eshah Sameh Sechutza. So, Kas has got to go first. He's got to act first. He's got to do Chalitza to both of them. Now, after he did Chalitza to both Rachel and to Leah, then, the Hashnayim, regarding these two brothers, Echot Chalitza. First, one of them has to go ahead and do Chalitza to one of them. To remove the Zika from his brother, if it is the Yavama, then the sister will be Mutur Mamanashach, and therefore the Echad Miyam. Then the other brother, we'll call him Levi, could do Yibum to Leah. Why? If Leah was really engaged to Ruvain, boom, he got the lucky one, he got the Yavama, he's Makam Mitzvah of Yibum. And if really Ruvain was engaged to Rachel, and she's the sister of that Zuku Kasai, and Shimon already removed that Zika. So it's not a Chaytzah Kukasai, and it's not a Chaytzah Bing, 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 Levi could go ahead and marry Leah. Because it's not a Chaytzah Kukasai, it's not a Chaytzah Kukasai, and it's not a Yuvam of the Shuk, because Kukasai already did Chaytzah on both of them. So even if, let's say, Leah was the real Yuvam to Gershon, that is no more Yuvam of the Shuk, because he already gave Chaytzah. So that's the case where one could end up doing Yibam. Now, what happens if, let's say, Kadmu Vukansu, what happens if, let's say, this Shina lady um, didn't do that? Let's say they both said, okay, look, you know, um, Kaz already did Chalitza to both of them, and they jump both, and they decide to do even both. So that's like we mentioned before, even Timmy Yadam, and I can take them away, because even though Bishas Maisa at the time was problematic, because it might have been a Chalitza Kukase. Now, once the second brother ultimately does, does even to the other one, it's no more Chalitza Kukase retroactively, so there's no problem. So they could stay married to those two sisters. Case gets a little bit more. What happens if this Ruben and Gershon both had two brothers? Oh, so here, each one of them is going to have one brother 
doing chalitza to one, as you see um, in, in the picture, let's say Shimon to Rachel and Kahas to Leah. V'achav shel zeh chalitza achas, and let's say the brother of one is going to do chalitza to one. The brother of the other one of let's say the, when we say one, we mean Reuben and then of Gershon. Each one's going to have one brother that's going to do chalitza to one of them, meaning the one that the other one's not doing. And then achav shel zeh meyam chalitza shel zeh. Then the brother of one, when we say of one, we mean let's say of Reuben, is going to do yibum to the one that the brother of Gershon had done chalitza to. V'achav shel zeh meyam chalitza shel zeh. And then the brother of Gershon is going to do yibum to the one that the brother of Reuben had done chalitza to. So, um, the, whoever it is, as you can see, if Kahaz is doing chalitza to Leah, then Levi is doing yibum to Leah. If, uh, if, 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 if Shimon had done chalitza to Rachel, then Merari is doing yibum to Rachel. Meaning, the other, bro- the other man's brother is doing yibum to a woman that the other man's brother had done chalitza to. Each one is having... That they're doing yibum to the one, not obviously to the one that his brother did, not, not his own brother did chalitza to. It, it, it's, it's the one that the other man's brother had done chalitza to, that's whom, from the other brother, is going to do yibum to. But he has to go on his own, though, but chalitza, chalitza, yibum, yibum. Right, so, so, ra- right, so Rashi explains um, that maman of shach, it's going to work out in that situation. Why? Because if this is yavama, so very well that he married the, the, the right one. Because his brother didn't do chalitza to this one, only to the sister, which, if it, the way we're saying it, was not the Yavama, and there was nothing. Meaning we're saying, let's say, um, Kahas is doing chalitza, and Murari is doing the Yibim to Racha. So... Murari cannot do the Yibim to Racha before the other one did chalitza. Right, right, right. So wait, so wait, so wait, right. So we we're first taking it a step by step the way Rashi says. It. He says like this. He says that if Merari gets it right, then Rachel happened to have been the one that was engaged to his brother Gershon. Good, no problem. Because this that uh, that custed Chalitza to Leah was first of all nothing because uh, his brother wasn't engaged. Right? And he got the right one. He hit it on the button. He got the right one. Now, let's say Rachel's really not Yavim Toy. Let's say the real, their brother actually was engaged to Leah, not to, to Rachel. It's okay, because he's marrying an unrelated woman. She was engaged to Reuben. Reuben's dead. There's no, there's no problem. Now, if it's because of Achis of Kukasa, right? because this Kuka was Leah and he's marrying the sister of the Kuka, so that's not a problem either, because his brother already did the Chalitza to the sister, which was the right Yivama, and that Zik is not there anymore. Now, What's with the fact that maybe it's Yavama Lashok? Maybe this Rachel was engaged to Reuben. And you know, they're not going to marry a, a woman that's waiting for Yibum to one of the other brothers. Oh, that's not a problem. Because she already had Chalitza from that one brother from the other man. Which is what you're trying to point out. That he, the Chalitzas have to go first. And then after the Chalitza that Rachel got from Shimon, and Kaz already did Chalitza to Leah, then Merari can marry Rachel, and Levi can marry Leah. Now, what happens if Kadmu, Shnayim, let's say, two of the brothers of one of them go ahead and v'chaltu. They go ahead and they do chalitza to both of the women because they didn't know which one's the Yavama. They're like, <coughs> I don't know, what's this is a mess, right? So they say, okay, let's just do, uh, let's say, we'll call them Shimon and Levi. Shimon and Levi go and they say, I don't know which one is the one that our brother was engaged in. You, you take one, I'll take one. Right? And let's do the shoe thing here and let's get this over with. Right? This is way too long of a night. So he Shimon does Chalitza to Rachel and Levi does Chalitza to Leo, or really it's the other way around. Leo does it to Levi and Rachel does it to Shem. But be that as it may, even so, says the Mishnah, let's say they both did Chalitza, Lo Yiyamu Hashnayim. The remaining two brothers, Kasim Rari, of the other man, should not do Yibum. Kahaz to Leah and Merari to Rachel. No. Why not? Because the first one to get married, you could say, is Achis the Kukase. Even if it's just Kahaz and Merari are, are remaining, because they, they already got out of the picture because they did Chalitza, still, can't have both of them doing uh, even to both of them, because one of them might be Achis the Kukase. Ella rather, Echad Chalitz. One of them first, where in this picture it's Kahaz, has to do Chalitza first. And then the second one, could you give him to the second one? Like Milan of Shachal, said before, if it's Yevimtai, boom, you hit it on the button. If it's not Yevimtai, 
Okay, it's not a chizik kakas anymore because it's rather, it's rather it already chalitz into the true yivama. And there's no problem, problem with yivama l'shuk because she already had chalitza from the true husband brothers, which was this Levi and this Shimon. Now, if let's say Kadmu, let's say the second, the last two brothers, if let's say they go without asking, and Bakantu they get married after the other, what we call in our picture Ruven, after those other two brothers had done Chalitza to both them already, and they didn't consult with the courts, he wrote to Emet and we're not going to take them out of their hands, like we explained, because the only problem that they might have had was Isra Chalitza Kuka, by the first, by the by the when they got married, which you could say that the first one that got married maybe was the Yavama and he got married well, and the second one was also got well married because maybe that was the unrelated woman, and even if it's the opposite, says Rashi that the first one did marry Chazikul Kasai, but ultimately once the second one comes along and does Yibum, it already moved the Zika from his brother and therefore the wife is permitted and whatever he did was done, but ultimately right now it's not a problem. So Rashi actually brings two smaras. Either, first of all, it's not necessarily, might not have been a chesed kukas, he might have, he might have hit it on the button. He, the first one that did it might have hit the Yavama, and the second one now is marrying an unrelated woman. And even if it was an Isra, ultimately it's not the Abed Abed. Now it's not a problem anymore because no mazika, so therefore the Ema Timi Yad and stay mad. Now it says the Gemara that Shema Minah, the Gemara actually goes to like a secondary idea over here, that what we see from our Gemara, uh, from our Mishnah, is Shema Minah. Uh, from the Rish of Amish, like Kedushin She'in Mesur and Labiyah. What that means to say that Rashi explains is that if it's a Kedushin, that at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to come to a situation of Bia, of cohabitation. Now, the assumption is that our mission is talking about that, as we were describing up until now, that um, these two women, that they, that they, uh, these two sisters, was that at the time of Kedushin, he didn't know who, who she was. Rashi gives a different case he, than the Schwartz twins. He was saying, He said, one of you are engaged to me, and both of the girls made a shliach to Mikab the Kedushin. So, you're not really sure which one you're engaged to. From the, from the, it doesn't have to be the Schwartz twins, it could be any two sisters. He said, one of you are engaged to me, and they made a shliach to the Mikab. So, these Kedushin, although technically he's engaged to one of them, the end is not going to have Bia because each one of them has a suffix of a chaysisha because we don't know who's the wife and who's the, the sister of the wife. Now from the fact that the Mishnah told us that you have to give a get to this one and give a get to that one, obviously that we're saying that, okay, one of them is going to, you're, real, you're really engaged to one of them and because of the suffix that we don't know which one it is, so you have to give a get to both of them. But obviously you see that have a Kedushin, that it's considered as a Kedushin, but as Rashi points out, it's Machling Zabayin Rabo, if that's considered as a Kedushin uh, in, in, in the Mesechus Kedushin of Ben Aleph, so seemingly over here from our Mishnah Yavariah, that Kedushin She'im Mesur and Labiyah is considered as a Kedushin. So you know, how come I see what I'm talking Mishnah is Kishu Hukru. It's not like the case that we described. During the time of the Kedushin, he knew he was getting engaged to. So therefore, it was Mesur and Labiyah. He was able to have a cohabitation and the Kedushin should take effect. But it was sightless Arbu at the end they got mixed up. So in, in the moment, he, he knew that they pointed out, said, look, let me just tell you, this is quick speed dating, this is Rachel, this is Leia. You see, Rachel has that mole over there, Leia doesn't. Got it? Okay, go. Yeah, five minutes, five minutes. Said, so, okay, bing, 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 get engaged. And then he forgot. What did the shot to say? I don't remember anymore. Now, which one was it? Rachel had the mole, was it Leia? Now I can't remember. And that's the case we were told about that it was Mr. and Because in the time when he did the condition, he knew who was who. But then he forgot, you know, you always try to remember, was that the one I was saying that I'm going to remind myself, is Rachel? That one I said that it's not going to be Rachel, I can't remember anymore. It's like Rachel Amenu that's like this and like late. He forgot, he can't know. So that's big enough, it says Gemara, a precise reading of the Mishnah indicates this because Mishnah says the words are Me'ini Yedeya. The words are he doesn't know which one he got engaged to, which sounds like now he doesn't know. Because Balekitan doesn't have any you do, it was not known. Which that would sound like he never knew. Ah, Shema Minah, it's only now that he doesn't know. But then he did know. So it was Kedushin of Mesut Labiyah. Because when he got engaged, he was able to have beer right then. He just ultimately forgot. And therefore, now you have a problem. You don't know. It's a Suffolk of Chayisisha, each one. So says the Gemara, Mai Kamash Malon. What is our Mishnah teaching us? Obviously, both need to have a get, because you don't know who's who. Says the Gemara, you're right. There's no Kedush in that. But Sefer, it's okay. The Sefer was necessary. The Mishnah said, May, if he dies, Veloi Achach, and he has one brother. So we said, Chalitza Shtein, you have to do Chalitza to both of them. We said if you have two brothers, then we said that one does chalitza and then and then the one could do yibum. 
Ah, so what we're telling you is the Davka Mechlitz is specifically one does Chalitza and then Rabbi Yabumi, and then the other one could do Yibum, Amon of like we explained in the Mishnah. Rabbi Yabumi, but to one to do Yibum, Veresha first, and then the second one to do Chalitza, that lie, that you can't have. Because the first one that's going to do Yibam, maybe is the Kapoga Bachesikukasai. He might be encountering the, the sister of the woman that has Zika, and that's the Chindesh that Mishnah that tells him. Obviously, not for the Reisha of itself. Now, going back to the Allah of the Mishnah, similar to the Allah of Mishnah, the Gemara says that Shnaim Shekitra Shteachais Bachul. We spoke about in the Mishnah regarding two uh, brothers, uh, two people that had uh, been engaged to two sisters, Bachul, etc. Meaning, we're two unrelated people, it's spoken about um, what the halacha is. Now, it says the Gemara, <coughs> Shema min, Shema min meaning this is the same conversation essentially as we just had a moment ago. It's just adding on the next case. But Shema Minol, we said we can hear from this Kedushan Shem Mesurin Labia, Havi Kedushan, because you, you told me the same thing when you had the case of this uh, two guys that are engaged to two different sisters. You told me he doesn't know which one, they both need Gitten. Obviously, it's Kedush Shem Mesurin Labia, Havi Kedushan. So he must have said, no, it's the same thing. But they knew when they got engaged. But at the end, it got mixed up. So it says the Gemara, they cannot make a precise reading in the case. It says, the it says the de- yeah, in your day, that he doesn't know now. But like you tell it doesn't say that he did not know. So it's so obviously, again, it's the same thing. So the Gemara says, like a lashalan. What's the Chiddush? So the Gemara here also says, it's called the Seif was necessary. Mesu, it says, but we said that if they died, we said, we said, we said if, let's say one has one brother, one has two brothers. So the we said that the individual, the one that's only a one brother, he does chalitza to both of them. And we said that the one that has two brothers, one does chalitza, one does hiva. So the says, well, that's also, that's also obvious. High narration. That's the same thing as narration. We already said in the narration that if you have two brothers, one could do chalitza and one could do it, then could do yibam, because you don't have the problem of yibam lashuk anymore. So the no, this case was actually necessary. Now the table, when you say here, you're not going to let the second brother do yibam, because since um, one of them has a single brother, meaning, like we said, there's two men involved in this, in this case. Ka- uh, Gershon has only one brother, Ka'as. Reuben has two brothers, but he has only one brother, this Gershon. So therefore, you maybe would say that leagues are tray, that you should make the Gezer on the one that, do- that does have two brothers, that neither one of them should do yibam. Atuchad, because if you let one of them do yibam, that maybe the one that has only one brother, that does not have a second brother, then maybe he might come ahead and he might also decide to do Yibam, and he's going to encounter a Chalitza Kukasa. Kamash Malan, that's what telling you that no, it's, as long as Kaas does Chalitza the boat, then Shimon could do Chalitza, but then Levi could end up doing Yibam. Another specific in this case says the Gemara that Vedavka Michlitz, as we pointed out all along, specifically if the one that has the one brother does Chalitza to both, and, and then Bahad Yibumi, and then uh, one of the two brothers, after his brother does chalitza, then he can do yibum to the second one. Um, yibumi beresha, but if, let's say, this, what we call him Levi in our picture over here, if he would do yibum before Kahas does chalitza to both the women, even if his Levi's brother Shimon did chalitza to the other one, to the sister, where then you would not have a problem with a kuka, then loy, it would still be prohibited to do yibum. Because this might be the woman that's engaged to the other man, to the garrison. And then the Kapoga be Yavama Then you're going to be encountering a different problem about marrying this Yavama um, to Levi, who has to go ahead and do the situation of Yibam, because it's without Chalitza. Because that's, that one brother, the Yavama Zakuk, to him. And that we did not learn in the ratio of the previous parts of the mission. That says Rashi, the explanation of the Gemara, was why we needed this case of the two unrelated men, because it just seems to be a more complicated way of saying something that he already said before, it's not. It's adding on this exact Chiddush, that you have to have Kaz doing Chalitza first, because you add on the variable of Yivam Lashog before Shimon does Chalitza, and then allowing Levi to do Yivam. Now he said in the Mishnah, Lezesh Naim, Lezesh Naim Bechul, we said, that if, let's say, either one of them has two brothers, so Bechul, etc., we said, then the, the brother of one will be Meyabim, the Chalitza of that the brothers of the other man had done chalitza to. So it's Gemara Hasul Amali, what do you need this for? I know how, it's the same thing you already said in the Reisha. You already told me the principles, that when there's two brothers, one does chalitza and then the other one does yibam, so the same thing is also over here. When you have two men, you'll have one doing chalitza, one doing yibam, 
And the other one, they also has two brothers. One will do chalitza and one will do yibam. So, yeah, it's a fancy way of saying that this one will do yibam to chalitza and the other one will do yibam to chalitza and the But you already said the principle. So, you want to know, what would you say? The least you make a decree. The dilma meyabim, that maybe we'd be concerned that maybe that uh, one of the two brothers on either side will end up doing yibam below chalitza or chalitza, and each one will encounter each one a, a suffix of yibam the shuk and of chalitza kuka. So, Kamash Malan, that's what come and tell you that we're not guys, because Rashi explains. We didn't know this from the ratio, because there, when one had one brother and one had two brothers, at the end of the day, only one person is doing Gibra. Now, since they're being engaged with Chalitza, because that one of the single brothers is going to have to do Chalitza anyway, so they can remember, and this lady's not going to do Yibam until his brother Shimon does Chalitza to the other one. And since at the end, um, uh, and, 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 and so they're going to remember, not going to do, and, and not going to do Yibam until the, you have the Chalitza of the single one doing to both of them. Now, in contrast, over here in our case, when there's uh, two brothers on either side, at the end of the day, both women are having Yibam done with one of the two brothers from different families, so they say, my one will what are you doing Chalitza for? Well, anyway, he's going to both end up doing Yibam one of them, so you do one other one, meaning one of the brothers engaged, one of the brother Reuben. That's what you've been concerned for, and therefore that's the Kamash Malan, that no, we're not concerned with that, as long as one does uh, Chalitza from one side, then the other one can do Yibam to that same one. But the Gemara says, Actually, they want to ask a question. Now, why is this any different from the Mishnah of Chavav Medalf? The Mishnah says the following case. Arba Achen, four brothers. Shnai Mehem Nesun Shtei Achayisim. Two of the brothers, as this picture shows, are married to two sisters. And the Mesha Nesun Nesachayis. And the brothers who are married to two sisters, they pass away. So Allah is, Hada Elo Chaltzos Beloi Mezayamas. The Mishnah, as we'll see later in Chavav, says, that these two women you have to chalitza to and you cannot do yibim to. Now the Gemara explains the reason over there is because of Sika. Because since both of them are zakir to either one of them, so the first one who's going to do yibim is encountering a chesek kukase, which is like his wife. Now one thing you see is that the, the Mishnah there does not say that let one, does, let one do chalitza to one of them, and that pushes away the zika from, her, from the brother, and then the other one can do yibim to the other one, like our Mishnah. Which he said that both of them could do have yibum each one after the chalitza of the sister, like we said. So why don't you say in our Mishnah also that all of them have to have chalitza just like over there? Why are we going to make that you can do yibum by chalitza shalzeh? And additionally, Rashi says another question is the seifa in that Mishnah says im kadmu v'kansu yitziu. If actually Reuben and Shimon go and they, they don't listen, to, they don't ask Bez and they do yibum to both of them, you're gonna have to remove them. And now Mishnah would say, What's the difference between the cases? It says, like, can, you be, can you compare the cases? What do you mean? As we continue to have a Chodal over there, meaning in, that there were both of them a Zokuk to them both. So, because both of them are from two of the brothers. If you go like the one who says in Perik Dalar and that the reason why you cannot do Yim even to one of them is because of Yezhika, so what do I mean? Because you have the principle of yeshdika, meaning originally they were both forbidden because you can encounter a chalitza kuka. When one of them does chalitza to one of them and he removes the zika, you cannot permit the sister to the other one because each one was a yivama, and the halacha is a yivama that was forbidden for one moment on the on her yavam, even after the, that there wasn't a feeling that she was, she was permitted. She's like a zach she and she remains forbidden forever. So these two sisters that are both Yabamas, the moment that they're Achayis and Kukas and never they're forbidden, even if subsequently one brother does Chalitza, that's not going to get you out of the situation that she was already forbidden. And as the Gemara continues, Vila Madama, and if you're going according to the one that says the reason why in that Mishnah, as we'll see in the Avchabab, it's forbidden because Aslabat Mitzvah Yabam, you now nullify the Mitzvah of Yibum. Because, like we said, if you, if, if, if you do one, then the brother might die. We mentioned this already in previous Dafim, and then it's, it's going to end up nullifying the Mitzvah Yibam. So, Aslabat Mitzvah Yabam. And that is, if, if one is going to do Yibam to one of them, like we said, maybe the other brother is going to die before he does Yibam. And then that means the sister is going to be excluded because of a Chaysisha. It comes out, you will not Mitzvah Yibam by not being able to do Yibam or Chalit Sitar. So, therefore, Rashi says the love this is. So, because of the Isnat of Timbab Yadmin, that makes it forbidden to do Yibum to any one of them. Because of the Isnat of Timbab that if you would do Yibum, you might nullify it. Which, that's a Rav Shaykh's point, says a discussion on that. Now, so once you become forbidden for one moment, 
Or if let's say one is going to do chalitza to one of them, and now there's no more concern with the second one, it doesn't make a difference. Because it, it still remains with the Isra of Eshesach, because initially, at least rabbinically, it was forbidden to do Yibam to her because of the Isra of Eshesach. <coughs> so of course this, you're never going to be able to do Yibam. It's called Tzibam Eshesach. And Kach Shachach will be here, this that we said that it's forbidden because of the Suffolk, each one is a Chayzekuka. The second one is not a Yavama, because his brother only married one woman. When you remove the Isra of by the brother doing Chalitza to the other one, so that's permitted, because it's not Eshesach. She's either the right Yavama or she's some unrelated woman. So out of Suffolk, we're not going to remove her because Kol Chad Vachad Eimer, because each one of the brothers are going to say, they did come as Ramulay. He got the right one. And therefore, that's why we're not going to go ahead and say that that's forbidden because it's, it's only a Suffolk Yavama and it's only one of them. And each one of them can say, I had married the right one. Now, the Gemara just concludes this discussion. We said in the Mishnah that if, let's say, um, when there's two men and the, the two brothers of one of them go and do chalitza to both. So he said, then the brothers of the second one, one has to do chalitza, one has to do yibam. But we said in the Mishnah, cut the Kansu, let's say they go and they beat them to it and they do get married, imitzim b'chul, we don't take them out. So Tana Shila, she looked toward a brayse of a foolish name, Kahan, even if both of them are Kahan, which is interesting. That means to say one of them is most definitely marrying a chalitza because the unrelated um, man who is engaged um, uh, was, was made a chalutza from the two brothers. As we said, the two, the, there was two, there was the Gershon and the Kas. There was these, uh, these two different men. And we said that if, let's say, um, Rari and Kas both do chalitza to both, we said that, let's say, Levi and Shimon both jump and they do yibum, we're not going to take them away. Or let's say it was only one brother. Either way, we said that, because you don't have a chalitza kukos anymore, and there's no chalitza chalitza, because it's the brother that did that. The problem is, you're saying even if both are kahanim, that means to say, but, but they had already become chalutzas, at least one of them, from the other man's brothers. And, and, and if you're both kahanim, then most definitely uh, you're marrying at least one of them a chalutza. So it's going my time, why is it permitted? So they myself, I'll tell you what, chalutza that's forbidden to a kohen and there's only the rabbanan, it's only isid rabbanan. But here, for each one, it's only a gesophic chalutza, it's only a sophic. Maybe the one that this one's doing yibim to is the bona fide yavam, uh, it's his yavama, and maybe not. Maybe it's really the other brother's uh, chalutzes. So the Gazer Rabban, the Rabban, that geyser, to take him, remove it from a situation of sophic. Says, says, says the Gemara of chalutza, Rabban, is really true that chalutza is rabbinic, which again, a, a rabbinic iser, we're not going to make it misophic. It's actually interesting, you know, in Dafa Yimba Allah, we're actually doing it on tzitz, it's the same type of thing. If someone's wearing tzitz, it's a sophic in the Kamalas, there's sophic de Rabbanan. Again, we, they weren't geyser by sophic de Rabbanan. So, and over here, we're not going to make you remove it. So, the Gemara is really chalutz de Rabbanan. By the time I learned the Braisa, the Pasuk of the Yikro Gurusha says in the Torah that a, a divorcee, Me'isha, from her husband, Lo Yikahu, the coin's not allowed to take. So says the 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 Brisa, Ainli I would only know a coin's not allowed to marry a divorcee. Chalutz minai. Tamalim be Beisha, which the word Beisha is extra. Beisha Gurusha. You don't have to say the word Beisha. So you see that it's derisa. So you want to run the whole across. I'm it's only rabbinic, and the pasuk is just an illusion, but it's rabbinic, and therefore in this situation where they really will come to a country, even if they're both gone, we're not going to make them remove the suffix Chalutz because anyways it's a drabanan, and by suffix did not make you divorce. Thank you, Johnny.